Uh, good morning. It's Tuesday morning. Uh, Russell Quirk again here. And I thought I'd do another little property roundup. Uh, yesterday's wasn't too shabby. It got picked up a bit on social media. Uh, and actually, I've had an, would you believe, an Australian radio station asked to interview me in uh, about 15 minutes' time about my rant with regard to the lunacy of Labour in the UK. The Labour Party saying that all estate agents should now have a mandatory A level in haberdashery or whatever you like really and that somehow makes you a bastion of integrity anyway so i'll be doing that on tnt radio live uh shortly i guess so um in the meantime i thought i'd have a little run through what's going on today um as yesterday seemed to go quite well um and um i'm sure you will read the property trades the negotiator estate agent today and property industry i um but i guess just to give you my little opinion and to uh, embellish their narrative um yeah look here we are this is what the trades are saying so this is a state agent today which of course is published nice and early about midnight gives us all the chance to kind of get our head around uh, the day's news well in advance um a few stories on here um some are a bit boring to be honest but that, that's the nature of having to write five or six property stories a day um but the really interesting one i think is this halifax first time buyers Ooh, and that's not good is it estate agent today um good job i've read it and i know what it says halifax first time buyers are teaming up as sales fall so recently we've seen in the news that first time buyer numbers have dropped and of course, they have dropped because transactions in 2023 were down by about 25 percent. So therefore, obviously, first time buyer numbers are going to drop. Uh, the reality is actually over 50 percent of all purchases over the last year or so have been to first time buyers. So the myth, the rhetoric that first time buyers are turning their back on the property market, relatively speaking, proportionally, is simply not true. Uh, so although we're not seeing quite the 450,000 first time buyers that perhaps we saw in 2021, 2022, Fortunately, we're still seeing quite a lot. Um, I would go as far as to say that rarely have first-time buyers had it so good. Yeah, quite a controversial statement. Uh, and the reason I say that is because interest rates, even though they're higher now, are not high. They are normal and therefore somewhat affordable. And of course, first-time buyers now versus when I bought my first property in the late 80s uh, when I was 18, um, yes, they have the bank of mum and dad. I think that's always existed in one form or another. But of course, they also now don't pay stamp duty, certainly on the first £400,000 of their property purchase. That wasn't the case years ago. And of course, they've had all sorts of mechanisms thrown at them in terms of incentive and uh, intervention by government around help to buy and so on. So first time buyers, forget the whole avocado sandwich bit and all that rubbish. Um, simply, it is affordable to buy a property as a first time buyer. How do I know that? Well, because the data, the facts, the proportion of people buying properties in the UK proves it. Um, so there you go. Um, end of argument, really. Um, so that's uh, estate agent today. Um, a couple of stories actually that were covered on trades yesterday elsewhere, such as house builders back Labour to get Britain building. Um, who ever thought that would happen, eh? That most house builders, as I touched on in that little rant yesterday, 70% of house builders say that they prefer a Labour government. Well, you're probably going to get what you wish. Um, in the negotiator this morning, uh, again, 70% of house builders want Labour. Uh, but the um, I think the most interesting story here, uh, apart from that, is this one here. Half of landlords plan to grow property portfolios. Now, I've sat on a lot of panels at the likes of the National Investor Landlord Show and, of course, Ben Beadle's National Residential Landlords Association, where there seems to be this air of negativity amongst landlords. Lots of, certainly the media, saying that landlords are going to exit the sector because they have been uh, hard pressed, really, pushed by uh, the current government insofar as Section 21, uh, tax relief on mortgages, capital gains tax changes, and so on. So without doubt, landlords are not in quite the uh, luxurious position that they were five years ago, or say. I would say, though, that despite the fact that they have been squeezed, given capital appreciation over a period of time, given yields, and particularly with rents rising, as they have done certainly in the last 12 months or so, being a landlord and owning property as a property investor is still a really good place to be. Uh, certainly, if you were to put your money into other assets, I would wager that over the long term, because well, property is a long term investment, five years, 10 years, uh, being a landlord, given that you get capital appreciation and a nice yield, 
typically four or five percent uh, on both of those things, uh, then actually it's not a bad place to be in terms of putting your money. Uh, and that's why I guess this story here rings true that half of landlords plan to actually grow their property portfolios. Um, so this is, you know, again, not uh, a revelation here necessarily, um, but uh, kind of cements what I've been hearing really that is landlords are not leaving the sector. And in fact, maybe now because house prices in certain areas have dropped a little bit, a little bit, landlords think, well, actually, maybe now is the time to start increasing the size of their portfolio. So um, uh, quite interesting there. And then property industry I, um, and I haven't done this, by the way, because I just happen to be top of the property industry I list of stories, honestly, uh, but uh, uh, even though it is the number one story. Wow, what a coincidence. Um, anyway, this is Property Industry I picking up on my comments yesterday, me slating Matthew Pennycook, the shadow housing minister, again, for that ridiculous announcement that, um, yes, A-levels are going to be mandatory and you have to go back to school to get one if you want to stay as an estate agent. Um, but um, again, the standout one for me here um, is, uh, with two really, two stories. This one here, next government must increase spending on affordable housing. Well, look, that's obvious and that's been called for for decades. Uh, talks cheap, easy to say this in terms of rhetoric. Um, but look, the British Property Federation here have a point. You know, they want to see more investment in social housing. I mean, we all do because it's needed. There are something like a million people on the housing waiting list. And of course, as houses uh, begin to slow down in terms of new build volume, as certainly has been the case over the last 12 months or so, the consequence is that of course, less social housing gets built because a lot of social housing is built as a consequence of Section 106 agreements. So if the likes of Persimmon, Bovis and Bellway and so on are building less homes, that's less social rent, less shared ownership and so on. Um, so, I mean, social housing, in my opinion, needs to be seen as a standalone thing. I think we need to get back to council housing. Uh, the problem is councils aren't very good at building houses because they're councils, not house builders. Um, so that there, there needs to be some real thought put into that. It's not just about money, by the way. Governments, local authorities are brilliant at wasting money. Just ask Sadiq Khan, uh, look at all the money that he was given uh, by the taxpayer and also by government, £4 billion, pounds, by the way. Uh, and he still has only managed to build about 25% of the houses in London that he promised to build when he was first elected in 2016. So all very well calling for this money. The problem is when it comes to giving that money to even housing associations, let alone government and local authorities, doesn't necessarily translate into a workable, executable plan where houses, social housing, is actually built uh, in time and in the right places. And actually, the second story that I was going to highlight here, building more homes is key to keeping prices rents in check. This is uh, the wonderful Richard Donnell from Zoopla, uh, proper property expert, Richard. Um, and of course, look, he's right. We do need to build more homes. But again, it's going to fall on deaf ears. Um, you're going to hear a lot of politicians in the next few months in the run up to the general election saying the same thing. You know, I think the solution to the housing crisis is um, I think we need to build more homes. You'll hear that a lot. And my, my answer to that is, yeah, no shit, Sherlock. Um, of course, Britain needs to build more homes. But the last people that we should be leaving that to is our politicians, because when it comes to house building, we know, again, facts speak that politicians successively after decades and decades of inability and inaction do seem to be rather incapable of doing the right thing in terms of putting a strategy and a plan into place to actually get written building. And frankly, um, you can't just leave it to great as they are, the top 10 house builders and their shareholders and management teams to decide when and where they build houses whereby society then is at the behest of those decisions. And of course, we all know that with the cyclicality of the property market, you're going to get ups and downs in terms of volume of houses built as a consequence of that cyclicality. Um, and unfortunately, that doesn't mirror society's need, particularly if we end up in Britain as we are for all sorts of reasons, immigration, uh, people living longer and so on, uh, with a rapidly growing population. So, um, yeah. Great words here, both from uh, Zoopla and the British Property Federation. Uh, unfortunately, we are beset with imbecilic politicians that know nothing about the housing industry. And even though they know nothing about the housing industry, 
um, don't seem to want to listen to it. Um, I'm not sure that, you know, myself, Richard Donald, Nathan Emerson, Henry Pryor, um, we're not getting calls from the government, from the annals of Whitehall on a regular basis saying, hey, how do you think we should do this? How do you think we should fix this particular problem? Um, they don't listen. They don't want to listen because, frankly, politicians like to use housing and property as a political football in order to create headlines so that uh, they look good and get elected. Um, and then what happens? They get elected and they let us down. Shock horror as this government, in my opinion, and probably the next one uh, has and will do. Um, OK, well, that's it for me. Um, quick roundup of property news this morning. Um, if you like this, let me know. Like it. Um, maybe add a comment. Um, so, yes, property news, Tuesday morning, 30th of January, uh, with a nice dollop of opinion from me. Oh, and by the way, before I go, I'm filming this at 7.34, so this will be out at 8 a.m. At 9.30 a.m. today, the all-important mortgage approval numbers come out. So this is the number... Uh, the numbers from the Bank of England uh, that show the number of mortgage approvals in December uh, and the forecast is for 40,000 or 45,000 actually mortgage approvals last month 50,000 but in last December's stats only 35,000 new mortgages were approved so um, let's see how we go shall we all right okay until next time um, if I do this again um, thank you very much indeed uh, and um, enjoy the rest of your day